Issue 4, Why Do Farmers Face Economic Difficulties? Part 1, The Von Thunen Model. Agriculture depends on factors including climate, physical environment, culture, and economic markets. The Von Thunen Model focuses on explaining the economic factors that influence the location of agriculture. Economic factors are important in making agricultural decisions. For example, the best place to grow wheat based on climate and soil would be in the Ohio River Valley and the Great Prairies of Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, right there. However, wheat is grown farther west on the high plains. Wheat is not grown there because it is the best place to grow it, but because it is the crop that will yield a profit there while other crops will not. Before we go much further, let's remember that models aren't real but they do simplify the world and help to explain complicated systems. Models help explain where and why things happen. There are three types of models. Graphic models, verbal models, and mathematical models. The Von Thunen model involves both graphic and mathematical models. It's important to know when and why Von Thunen came up with his model. The model was developed at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in Prussia which eventually became the country of Germany. The Prussian government was trying to improve its agricultural system. There was a group of scholars who were arguing for rotational cropping, where different crops would be grown from year to year. So, who is Johann von Thunen? He was a German landowner, an amateur economist, who was inspired by the English economist Adam Smith. Von Thunen was also a snazzy dresser, and his goal was to find natural laws for farm location that went against the crop rotation system that was being suggested. He felt that the system that scholars in Prussia favored would not be practical and in certain years farmers would actually lose money. Von Thunen was looking for a system that would maximize profits. He wrote a book that explained his ideas called The Isolated State. Even though it's very important, it wasn't even translated into English until 1966. That's 140 years later. In his book, he explained the first economic model of spatial organization. He based it upon cities in Germany near his farm. It's really important because it was the beginning of all location geography and inspired many other models to come. The model is based on deciding where to grow a crop and what type of crop should be grown. A lot of this is based on the cost of land and transportation. Land closer to the city market was more expensive, but transportation costs were lower and land further away from the central market was cheaper, but transportation costs were higher. And so he tried to make a model that helped farmers make the decision about where the best place to grow their crops would be. Von Thunen's main idea was that if you have an identical plot of land with no change in soil, farmers will choose the activity that makes the greatest profit. There are three factors that can affect profit. Transportation costs, price of land, and proximity to market, especially to prevent spoiling food. Johann von Thunen came up with the graphic model and mathematical model. Let's look at the mathematical model first. For our first example, we'll look at the variable of transportation cost. Because farmers pay to transport their produce to market, these costs are directly proportional to distance. As you can see from this chart, the profit for each product declines as a straight line with increasing distance from the market. The further you are from the market, the more it costs to transport the good. This is an example of distance decay. For example, let's look at wheat, and we're going to assume that wheat sells for $100 per ton. Wheat has costs associated with it, so we are going to arbitrarily say that it costs $20 a ton to grow wheat and $2 per mile to transport wheat. As you can see, profit decreases further from the market due to transportation costs. Plotted on the graph, it makes the most sense to grow any crop close to the market based on transportation cost. As you can see from this chart, farm A is going to make the most money on wheat because it is closest to the market. Different crops have different market prices, so how do we decide between crops? Let's assume that potatoes sell for $120 a ton. They cost more to produce and more to transport because they are bulkier. If in this imaginary land you were to walk from the marketplace out into the countryside, you would see nothing but potatoes and then nothing but wheat. Close to the market, a farmer can earn $20 more growing wheat than growing potatoes. In the middle zone, either crop would be okay. 
In the furthest zone, wheat would be the most profitable. This is what it would look like plotted on a graph. Obviously, the real world is far more complex. Fontunin developed these basic principles to come up with a pattern of land use. The last example we looked at only focused on the impact of transportation. Let's add the cost of land into this equation too. Different agricultural activities are competing for the usage of land. Land close to the market has rent that is very high because land is limited there. Sometimes farmers must bid a high price for this land for products that would incur high transport costs. This higher rent forces farmers to try and raise a yield requiring more inputs. Land further away from the market is in lower demand and so land will be cheaper. From this, we can work out the profits for each piece of land. In this case, production cost does not stay the same. The cost of land is added to the production cost so that it is more expensive to produce a crop near the market. If we use the equation P equals M minus the sum of T and L, in which M is the market price, L is the land rent and production cost, and T is the transport cost, we can figure out the profit. Because different crops have different transportation costs and land costs vary, you can use this mathematical model to determine what to grow. According to this scenario, it is most profitable to produce milk in Zone 2. In Zone 4, a farmer would actually lose money. In the frontier, it might even cost an arm and a leg, and that just isn't worth it. Von Tunen's model can be even more complicated than what I just showed you. We will explore this equation in more detail in class. So, summing up what we've learned so far, the model is going to predict that intensive farming and farming of crops that spoil are going to occur closer to market. It also predicts that extensive farming and crops that are easy to store will occur further from the market. The real world has a lot more variables than Von Tunen accounted for. He only considered land cost and transportation cost. To simplify the real world, Von Tunen made several assumptions. Number one, the fact that the city would be located centrally in an isolated state. An isolated state doesn't rely on any other cities or competing markets. Second, he assumes that land is flat without any other features like rivers, trains, golf courses, changes in soil quality, whatever it may be. This is called the isotropic plane. Third, he assumed that farmers transport goods to market via ox cart across land directly to the central city without passing go or collecting $200. Basically, there's no roads here. Lastly, farmers have to pay for caviar and hot tubs, so they always act to maximize profits. This means that culture and government policy doesn't come into play in his model. Essentially, Von Tunen focused on situation factors rather than site factors when he developed his model. So, what does the Von Tunen model actually look like? Well, one day while playing darts and thinking about the isolated state, Von Tunen hypothesized that under the assumptions, a pattern of concentric rings around the market would develop. Here's what he saw. It looks a lot like a target, even though he wasn't actually playing darts. Von Tunen found that specific crops were grown in different rings around the cities in the area depending on access to market and transportation. Over time, this pattern has changed slightly. Let's take a look at what it, the graphic model entails. In ring one, farmers should grow perishable, high transportation cost items, things like dairy, eggs, fruits, vegetables, and flowers. In this ring, the land rent is high and intensive farming is the only way to make enough money to turn a profit. This is why the area near cities is oftentimes called a milk shed. That is where dairy farms surround cities. As you can see, Von Tunen's model shows up in dairy farms being closer to major cities in California, for example. Cities like LA and San Diego, and then further north near San Francisco. Some regions produce more cheese than milk because they are outside major milk sheds. Milk is more perishable than butter, so butter will be more likely to be made further from the cities. The growth of cities, also called urban sprawl, has led to a decline in the number of dairy farms. 
Fewer farms means that we need to produce more milk in the farms that we do have. Mechanization and technological changes have made larger herds possible, and cows are also able to produce higher yields through genetic modification and other means. All right, so that's ring one. Let's take a look at ring two. Ring two consists of timber and firewood that was used for fuel and building materials. Before industrialization and coal power, wood was a very important fuel for heating and cooking. Wood is very heavy and difficult to transport, so it would be advantageous to have it located close to the city. This zone doesn't exist anymore. As cities grew, they expanded into ring one, and ring one expanded into ring two, and so on. Wood was less important as cities grew because heating and cooking used other fuel types. The third zone consists of extensive field crops such as grains for bread. Farmers tend to make less profit per acre this way. Since grains last longer than dairy products and are much lighter than fuel, transportation costs are lower. Because of these lower transportation costs, they can locate further from the city on less expensive land which helps maximize profit. Ranching is located in the fourth ring surrounding the central city. Animals could be raised far from the city, because in Von Tunen's time, they would transport themselves to the market. Animals can walk to the central city for sale or for butchering. This type of farming requires the most amount of land, so it needs to locate where land is cheaper. Beyond the fourth ring lies unoccupied wilderness. Wilderness was too great a distance from the central city for any type of agricultural product to turn a profit, so there would be no agricultural activity in the wilderness. Here's a more detailed diagram based on Von Tunen's description in his book. He included a, a way to make use of crop rotation that made more sense based on maximizing profit. Instead of rotating crops with all the different zones, he only suggested rotating crops within certain zones. Although Von Tunen developed a model for a small region with a single market, it can also be applied on a national or global scale, although the model generally looks much different in the real world. Many changes have occurred since Von Tunen's time that have affected what the model looks like today. Changes include refrigeration and food preservation, including the pasteurization of milk, and better transportation. Some agricultural products are not even used for food anymore. Forests do not occupy the market zone because firewood is not used for fuel. Suburbs have replaced a lot of this land. Other changes to the model include the fact that farmers are now growing food for global markets instead of local markets. Another reason that it becomes difficult to apply the model is that it oversimplifies the real world. The main weakness of his model relates to the basic assumptions that he made. Each of these can be dismissed. First of all, people aren't motivated by money alone. There are other factors that can change their decisions. For example, at a certain income level, people want to retire or enjoy more leisure time. Farmers are also affected by cultural needs and the government policy. Next, the isolated state. We know that there really isn't an isolated state and that there are many markets and many urban centers that farmers will produce food for today. Third, the isotropic plane. Both human and physical features have a great influence on farming and Von Tunen did not take those features into account. Lastly, changes in transportation developed since Von Tunen's time. Food can be transported further than ever before. We've invented things like refrigerated trucks, trains, and airplanes that make transportation much simpler. We've also figured out ways to preserve food and perishable produce can be stored for a much longer time than in the past. So we know that Von Tunen's model said that the physical landscape was flat and didn't have any features. This diagram from the textbook shows how a river might change the model. The general pattern is still there, but it doesn't look like the neat little rings that come from the isolated state. This diagram shows how other factors can modify the model, including a river, roads, competing cities, and international trade. This diagram shows what Sydney, Australia should look like in the model and what it really looks like. This map shows the pattern applied to Europe. Can you determine what cities make up the market area? The Von Tunen model can be applied to the United States. Because most of the U.S. landscape was built after modern transportation like the railroad, transportation costs have a lot less influence than they do on the landscape of Europe and Asia. 
In the United States, agricultural regions are influenced by distance to market and local site factors. Figure A represents what the agricultural land use model would be if the most basic assumptions of the Von Thunen model and the isolated state were applied. The market is located in New York, as well as the extended built-up area along the coast, including Boston, Washington, Philadelphia, and other major cities. This is called the megalopolis. Crops are ranked by rent, and terrain and climate are not accounted for. Although this image has some connections to reality, it is not exactly accurate. Agricultural choices aren't made based solely on economic reasons alone. Climate and culture need to be accounted for too. This map shows the agricultural regions of the United States and Canada roughly as they are today. This is a little bit better application of Von Thunen's model in the United States. Figure B still assumes that New York City and the built-up area is the only market. Crops have been ranked by rent paying ability. It still assumes that there's no terrain variation. But in this case, climate is now considered. Johann von Thunen's model has many weaknesses. In his book, he recognized that the model could be modified to deal with those weaknesses. First, von Thunen oversimplified the real world. This is a weakness of just about any model. His model is often criticized for having little modern day relevance. The main weaknesses of his model relate to the basic assumptions that he made. We've already examined the problems with those assumptions. The model does not take into account any site or human factors. He did not account for effects of different climate and soil conditions. He did not account for barriers like roads or rivers. He did not account for social customs and government policies. Von Thunen failed to take into account innovation. The model was based on trends of the early 19th century before industrialization. The model was also developed only for single or small market regions, but it must be adapted to national and global scales too. Even though the Von Thunen model was created in a time before factories, highways, and even railroads, it is still an important model in geography. First of all, it was the first economic model of spatial organization. It looked at the world in a completely new way. Next, it shows the balance between land cost and transportation cost. Farmers balance the cost of transportation, land, and profit, and produce the most effective product for market. The model explains that pretty well. It also helps explain why farmers choose the crops that they do. It explains where it makes sense to produce low-value, bulky commodities, and where it doesn't. Many examples of where the model can apply have been found, especially in North America. Lastly, the model is useful in discussions of land use and modern agricultural patterns. Von Thunen's ideas have inspired other geographers. For example, William Alonzo used ideas from Von Thunen to develop an urban land use model called bid-rent theory that takes into account things like population density, employment, and other factors that explain the location of businesses and residential areas and cities. Here are some things you should know about the Von Thunen model. Number one, what are the basic economic factors that affect agricultural land?